Okay, I was sent uh, a picture by some don't know in the States, Bob, thank you Bob, with an idea for, a, for an image and it was a presentation of a wedding picture and I really liked it, I thought it was absolutely stunning. So, got this picture, it was taken by uh, Joe Doyle of joephoto.co.uk, some stunning images of which uh, this was one of them, a couple on their engagement day walking along the beach and in the picture that Bob sent me I thought the presentation was absolutely smashing. What we're going to do is we're going to put it in a new empty layer, layer 1. Coming across the toolbox, we're going to pick up the rectangular marquee tool. We're going to come into the image, something around about this area here, dragging it down and across, just leaving a part of the picture there out of the frame. So this is coming out of that selection. We're going to go to Select, Inverse. So we've inversed this selection. Coming across now, we're going to pick up the gradient tool clicking on the linear gradient, this one here, and if you click on the little window we're going to pick up the gradient editor selecting this one here, it's going to be the orange through to the orange there, so it's orange, yellow through to, well you know, you can see it, yeah, okay, click OK to that. Right, bring in the gradient tool into the image, you're going to press and hold down shift which will ensure we've got a nice straight line, so holding down the shift key we're going to come down, dropping this in, and that's now fill this with this sunset colour. Command or Control D will deselect. The next thing we're going to do is blend this with the layer underneath. You might want to just come and you might just want to reduce the opacity through. You can try that if you want to. Or you could go to the blend modes. Something like soft lights could work quite nicely. Some nice pastel colours coming through there. Or how about overlay? Some nice sunsetty colours coming through. You can see the difference on the bottom. Next we're going to add a frame inside this again. Now to do that we're going to come to the thumbnail image here. I'm going to press and hold down the command or control key. I'm going to click down. It's brought back a selection. And again, we're going to go to select inverse. So we've now selected the inside area here. We're going to put in another new empty layer. Go into edit. We're going to go to stroke. Right, got uh, what we've got there, 19 pixels, I'm going to click, we're going to go for a white one, so clicking in the colour picker there, so you're going to go for white, 19 pixels, yeah, I should think that'd be pretty fine for this size, location inside, in other words, it's going to come inside that selection, click OK to that, nice one, in it goes, there's our framework, command or control D to deselect. Right, dropping down, we're going to click on the FX icon just off the screen here with bevel and emboss. Let's click on this. There's our layer style with our bevel and emboss. Let's zoom in as well so we can see what's happening. And you can see there it is coming around there. Nice bit of framework. And the next thing we're going to do with this is we want to be able to see through this again. So let's just zoom down to this sort of area here so we can see through the image. We're going to click on blending options defaults coming through we're going to come to the fill opacity not the opacity slider but the fill opacity we're going to drop this down as we drop this down you'll notice you can still see the frame you can still see the bevel and emboss you can still see the shadow area through there let's zoom out and there is the framework over the image right we're going to click OK to that in it goes as a layer style so you can come back and we can change and we can adjust this at any time the next job is we're going to pick up the type or the text tool and we're going to bring it into the image and we're going to click down and I think this was, if I remember rightly, Duncan and Kelly. Apologies if I got the names wrong. Oops. Right, clicking down, you can see there they are. They're looking pretty small. I'm not even sure what font we've got. I'm going to press down and hold down the command or the control key and just clicking in the side there. We can make this bigger now to fit in with the scale of the image, just holding down command or control for this and just repositioning it, not too keen on the font, so let's change the font to something a little bit more still like keep a little bit of um, sort of, ooh, let's just go for that, that looks pretty good let's click off there, you can see that's in there nicely, coming down we're going to put in a drop shadow just moving that slightly behind. A word of warning, you'll notice the way it's actually affecting that framework as well. So make sure you switch off, use global. Now it's purely behind the text itself. So we can bring that in. Let's click OK. The other thing is if I just bring it back to life again, 
Not sure that looks particularly good with an uppercase A. That's better. And there it is. Job done. We can take this a stage further as well. Just let me show you. This is another picture again taken by Joe Doyle of joephoto.co.uk. Popped in. There's the framework around that. What we've done this time, just let me show you this. That's the original using exactly the same settings. You'll notice there's the background layer there. All we've done with this, let's get rid of this so I can show you from start. Make sure we're working on layer one. This is the one with our gradient framework. What we're going to do with this is in CS4, we're going to click on the adjustment layer. Coming down to hue saturation, you can click on this icon here, which will clip it to the layer underneath. You'll notice there it's now become clipped to the layer underneath. Any other version of Photoshop, just press and hold down the Alt or the Option key to clip or unclip it. Right, let's come back to this. What you can that now do is use the hue slider and you can change the color in the image as well by using the hue slider. So you can move this across, you can bring the saturation, you might want to take the saturation right down, you might want to even take the lightness down as well, so dark, and it, it's entirely up to you. The whole thing is completely adjustable. You can change it for the moods and the pictures that you're working with, but again, the whole thing is you can see through the framework, you see the veil of address there, and got the text underneath. Go on, give it a try. It works on a whole range of different pictures and you just set them off. It just gives the presentation a little bit of a difference. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.